This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. This is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And we, of course, we broadcast from beautiful old town Scottsdale, Arizona, where it's either heaven or hell. And right now, it's pretty much heaven. It's fantastic. But today's show is possibly, it's, it's going to be a part of, it's going to be part of a five to maybe seven part series because in my opinion, this is the most important program you can be listening to today. Just remember this. Okay. Why is it important? Because we're warning you of the biggest crash coming and you still have time to do something about it. So please, it's going to be the biggest crash. So it's, it's about pensions. Now, for those of you who are millennials and all this is say, well, it's not going to affect me. Yes, it will if the old guys go down and the pensions take down your 401k. So this, again, I'll repeat this. This is part of a, maybe a five to seven part series. We're going to have experts talking about how massive this problem is and how on the edge we are today. That It's already popping up in the news but most people don't cover how big this pension crisis is coming. They talk about this virus in China. Well, this pension crisis is bigger than that virus in China because the pension crisis is a global crisis. It is bigger than the 2008 subprime crisis. So this is a very important program. So again, as part of a five to possibly seven part series, we have different experts coming on and you will learn more importantly, why it's going to happen. I mean, it is inevitable. I mean, there is no stopping it. But more importantly, what you can do about it if you understand it and take evasive action. So let me remind all of you, back in January of 2008, I came on CNN on Wolf Blitzer, and I made a complete idiot of myself saying that Lehman Brothers was going down. Now, Wolf and CNN did not like that show. Plus, they had a Wall Street person who was trying to defend Wall Street, you know, those criminals. But anyway, so in January of 2008, I warned that Lehman was coming down. In September, I believe, Lehman came down, and that was the beginning of one of the biggest crashes in world history. This next crash coming is going to make 2008 look like a blip, like nothing, because this is about pensions, and it's a global crisis. Any comments, Kim? Yeah, it, it, this is going to, we've got two great experts here. And the most important thing for me is that, you know, people say, well, I don't have a pension, so I don't have to worry about this. It's not my problem. Um, but we've got two experts here who are going to tell you what the, what the effect will be for, for everyone globally um, with this crisis. And as you said, Robert, most importantly, what you can do um, to prevent or to protect yourself, I should say, to protect yourself from this coming crisis. So in 2020, our latest book was released. It's called Who Stole My Pension? It was written by myself and my friend Ted Sedell. Now, Ted Sedell is a former SEC attorney, and he got sick and tired of watching the SEC just let people like Wall Street loot people's pensions. So today, many state pensions like Rhode Island and just recently Ohio came out saying their pension is going insolvent. California pension system is going insolvent. They're under a trillion dollars underwater, but nobody's talking about it. So this and the next five to seven part series could be the most important thing you could listen to, whether you're young or old, planning on retiring or not planning to retire, because let me say, this is like the asteroid hitting planet Earth. This is bigger than the subprime crisis. So welcoming to our program is, again, Ted Sedell. He is a co-author of Who Stole My Pension with Me. And He's also a former attorney with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission and America's leading expert in pension looting, which I kind of like that title. And as a whistleblower, he makes a lot of money <laughs> blowing the whistle. I think he, he found his calling there, just blowing the whistle on how labor unions, Wall Street, and the people that manage the pensions, your friends, your, you know, for the labor unions, for the police officers, for firefighters and school teachers, the people you know and trust are robbing you blind. So Ted's book, Ted is the expert because he can see what most of us cannot see. And our second guest is a longtime friend, John McGregor. He is a CFP, which means Certified 
uh, plan, plan, certified financial planner. And he is more on the defined contribution side, IRAs, 401ks, SEPs. And Ted is an expert on defined benefit, which are what the school teachers, firefighters, police officers, the guys, and they've actually been looting from us too. I mean, it has been horrible. So simply said, defined benefit is industrial age pensions. And defined contribution is in, 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 uh, information age pensions. The problem is both are broke. So if you're sitting there at home and say, ah, I've, I've heard this before, I don't have to worry about it, let me say, this is bigger than an asteroid hitting planet Earth. So please pay attention. Once again, it's a five to seven part series. We have different experts. Our experts today are Ted Sedell, my co-author, who stole my pension. Please get the book, especially if you have a father or a child who is counting on that pension. And John McGregor, he is the author of the 10, top 10 reasons why the rich go broke. He's the guy that handles all those, if you the 401ks, IRAs, and all that, because you've been robbed also. So welcome to the program, Ted and John. Great to be with you guys. Thank you. So Ted, why don't you give a quick uh, give an introduction to yourself? And why this book, Who's Told My Pension, is so important today and how it's going to affect everybody throughout the world. Sure, I'd be happy to, Robert and Kim. Um, I am a former SEC attorney, and I've pioneered the field of forensic investigations of pension funds. I've done over a trillion in forensic investigations. And uh, last year, I won the largest whistleblower awards in history, uh, which was... 48 million from the SEC and 30 million from the CFTC. So when I talk to regulators about what I find uh, looting out there, they do listen. And not only do they listen, they're willing to pay handsomely for those insights. And who stole my pension, what you can, who stole your, who stole my pension, what you can do to stop the looting is about 35 years of forensic insights. Um, and why you should care is because in the world of pensions, we talk about pension stakeholders. Stakeholders are workers who participate in pensions and contribute to pensions, state and local pensions. But they're also taxpayers. As a taxpayer, whether you like it or not, you are contributing to these pensions. So if they fail, you will have to pony up more money. So that's why whether you're a state worker or have a pension or not, if you're a taxpayer, you want to know about this because it's going to cost you. Cost. And we're in, in, in the early stages of the greatest retirement crisis in the history of the nation and indeed the entire world. In the decades to come, we'll witness hundreds of millions of elders globally, including baby boomers in America, slipping into poverty. Too frail to work, too poor to retire will become the new normal for many of our oldest citizens. I mean, the good news is that more people globally are living longer than ever, and soon we'll have over 2 billion people ac across the world over the age of 60. So for better, for worse, there's simply never been more elderly people living on planet Earth. The bad news is that only a very, very small minority of these folks have enough personal savings to pay for to survive decades of retirement. So thank, thank you, Ted. So John, um, you and I grew up in Hawaii. You're friends of Barack Obama. and um... <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> But, um, and you're a hardcore socialist, but what do you think is going <laughs> to okay, You can all ignore those comments. <laughs> no, I, mean, I will. I, I, just, I just love getting John's blood to boil because he and I both grew up in the People's Republic of Hawaii where what's, what's mine is yours and yours is mine and everybody's here to help each other out through their money. And uh, so John had to leave Hawaii because he got disgusted with the people looting and stealing from everybody else in Hawaii, you know. Well, talk it, about taxes. I mean, oh, taxes geez. are through the roof in Hawaii. They tax you for every single thing. Oh, it's horrible. Everything. It's horrible. So, John, as an expert on what we call defined contribution, again, the IRA, 
401k and SEPs and all that. What do you see out there? Are the baby boomers prepared for retirement? No, not at all, sadly. Like Ted said, I mean, we're in the early stages of the, of the greatest retirement crisis we've ever seen or will see. Um, it's an absolute train wreck. I mean, not only on the pension side, the defined benefit side, but on the defined contribution side, which, which is now, sadly, um, 401k plans have become America's predominant retirement savings vehicle. You could believe that. And it was never designed to be that in the first place. And so to answer your question, are people prepared, particularly the baby boomers? I mean, think about this. The median balance of a 401k today by a 60-year-old is about $62,000. $62,000 by a, by a, by a 60-year-old. And they're and that's they're planning, what they have and they're for planning the on they're planning on living off of that. <laughs> that's going to that's going to Absolutely. for the rest of their life. They're they're planning on that and then they're also planning on the little they're getting from social security and that's it. And as we all know, if you if you look at the it's studies on social security cuz what is it yeah. almost Almost half of Americans don't have a 401k at all. A significant That's true. Portion don't That's have a anything. great point, Ted. Yep. So, so yep. half Americans don't have a defined benefit, which is what the teachers, firefighters, and police officers have, and Teamsters. And half have no savings. And half have, they all have no 401k. So... Can you just define, quickly, can you just define defined benefit and defined contribution? What's, what's the difference? Ted? Oh, the difference between a defined benefit and a defined contribution plan is a defined benefit plan pays you a defined amount, promises you a defined amount of money per month for every uh, month of your retirement. A defined contribution plan, you put your money in, you own that money, and you inv- you make investment decisions, and so that is all you get is the if you invest $100,000 and after 20 years it grows to $200,000, that is all you have. It's the amount you've contributed plus how much it has grown over time. And the, and the promise of a defined benefit is you're going to get this for the rest of your life. Yes. You, you could calculate what your benefit will be, and that's what you have been promised for, your, for the rest of your life. Got and it. I think that's shocking about who stole my pension when you get into it, because, again, because I represent the DC, the defined contribution side, the 401k side, and Ted represents the defined benefit side. That's what makes who stole my pension so important. But the average school teacher is going to get about $1.2 million. Trouble is, there's nothing there. Supposed to get one point two million. Yeah, in, in that's payouts. what they've been promised. In so what? Payouts. So wait, wait, wait. go ahead. And the average four hundred one k is sixty five thousand. So those, you know, so all of these public servants, police officers, school teachers, firefighters, they're here to protect us. They're ripping us off, and worst of all, they're being ripped off too. I mean, the, their money's if going I- in, but the people protecting who are helping them steal that money are stealing from them. So, Ted, is that, is that what's happening, defined benefits? Yeah, I mean, what's happening in both areas is that Wall Street has been looting these plans. And in the defined benefit area, uh, in the case of, for example, state and local government pensions, um, half of those pensions have been cut since 2008. So the money promised, the promises made, have not been kept since 2008 the benefits have been cut and these firms have been paying ever more money to wall street for really esoteric secretive investments called hedge funds private equity funds um, venture capital funds so these are the highest cost uh, riskiest most secretive investments ever devised by wall street and that's where the money's going and where the money's leaving is it is is workers accounts because benefits are being cut. And one more and the thing. Same thing's happening on the 401k side. Too. Right, same thing. So one of the things we're going to have, like I said, this is one, the first of maybe a five to seven part series. One of the people we have coming on to the next, one of our next programs is a gentleman named Mark Green. He's mentioning who stole my pension and he is a teamster. He drives for UPS, United Parcel Service. And these guys are pretty smart dudes and all this. UPS is a very strong company. But, Ted, what happened to Mark's pension? Yeah, Mark's pension, which was the New York State uh, Teamsters pension, 
um, was taken over by the government, and uh, benefits were slashed by 50 percent. So these drivers, Mark was a is a 30 year UPS truck driver. He thought he was going to get a certain amount of money. I, so, I forget whether it was fifty thousand a year or whatever, and his his pension has been cut in half. I, I thought the numbers he told me, but he's coming on anyway, just to be more accurate. But when you, when I heard his story, I couldn't. He's still a young guy too, because he started you know thirty years ago when he was twenty. So he's only fifty, and he thought he was set. But I think the numbers was he's kind of expecting five k a month, five thousand a month, and you know most of us can yeah, have okay. a five. But now I think it's down under a thousand a month or something like that. But anyway, stay tuned because we're going to, you know, Ted and I will be interviewing Mark Green, a teamster, and everybody thinks, you know, that was Jimmy Hoffa and there was a there was this movie called The Irishman and all that stuff. And so a guy like Ted has been contributing all this time happily, you know, making all this money. But the boys in the back have been stealing his money. So John, as a as a person who can, you know works with people with defined contributions, 401k, IRA, how many of them are prepared for retirement that you talk to? Very few of them. It's, it's scary, actually, to think about it. And, and, and piggybacking off what you're talking about, the defined benefit side, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people that, that are expecting a pension, whether they're firefighters, police officers, or teachers, and they say to me, it's guaranteed. It's mm-hmm. in writing. They can't take this away from me. And I, I just look at the funding percentages of their current plans. I mean, some of these some of these plans across the country, New Jersey, Illinois, Connecticut, Colorado, Hawaii, they're at 30 to 40% funded of what they need to be. And then they'll say, well, we've got the PBGC. That's the, uh, that's the bailout. That's the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. That's the funding backstop if any of these plans go bust. But that's expected to run out of money, and Ted probably knows this better than I do. That's expected to collapse in 2025, just in five years. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, so this is a trainer. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's why massive deficit. Yeah, that's why you guys. Yeah. I'm glad you listened to the Rich Dad Radio Show because we're giving you fair warning because this has not happened yet, but it's happening in other parts of the world. There's Hong Kong. There's Chile. There's Paris, where they've been rioting for a year now because they want to cut their pensions. But Americans sit there and they're fat, dumb, and happy saying, oh, my God, Trump's going to save us. The stock market's at an all-time high. And just before it crashes, everything's at an all-time high. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's why these five to maybe seven programs are the most important Rich Dad programs you can listen to because you're being forewarned. And you can still take what they say as a pilot, evasive action, before the roof falls in on you. So don't sit there fat, dumb, and happy. Says, "Well, I'm 25 years old. I don't have to worry." Trust me, you'll have to worry when people like, let's say, mommy and daddy and grandma and grandpa move in with you, or you lose your job and your pension too, or you don't have a pension. So this is the biggest financial crisis that's ever going to hit the world. This is much bigger than the 2008 Lehman crash, which I gave people almost eight months to prepare and get out of, but nobody, I don't know if I listened, but Wolf Blitzer didn't listen. He just thought I was lying to him. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. When we come back, we'll be going more into what the causes of this biggest financial crisis in history. This is a multi-trillion dollar crisis. But what you can do is the most important thing. We'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And this subject today is one of a multi-part series, maybe five to possibly seven episodes on the most, the biggest financial crisis yet to hit this earth, like an asteroid hitting this earth. It is bigger than that coronavirus stuff. It is about pensions. And as Ted Sedell, who is my co-author in the book, Who Stole My Pension, points out, in the world today, there are 2 billion baby boomers set to retire in the next 10 years. 2 billion, that's not 200 million, that's 2 billion, and most of them are broke. And all of you who are young say, well, it's not gonna affect me. Trust me, it'll affect you one way or the other, especially when the, defi- the, when the whole thing comes down like a house of cards. 
So our guest today is my co-author, Ted Sedell, and he is a former SEC attorney, and he got sick and tired of watching Wall Street and the banks and the labor, labor unions rob the pensions. And a dear friend from Hawaii, John McGregor, and he is a CFP. He teaches people to be financial planners, and he is, John is the expert on a defined contribution, known as a 401k, IRA, and SEP. And Ted is an expert on the other type of pension, which is called defined benefit, which teachers, firefighters, and police officers, and many union people have. Simply said, defined benefit is the industrial age pension. And for the baby boomers, they shifted into what's called defined contribution, which John is an expert on. So if, if I understand this correctly, Wall Street saw this big pot of money called pensions all over the world and said, oh, this is, this is easy pickings, let's go after them. And they basically raped and pillaged these pensions and left all, they're, are leaving all these people um, in a financial crisis. So my first question, Ted, is why, why is it only you and Robert right now are the only ones talking about this coming crisis? And why is it not in the news? Why is nobody talking about it? Well, Kim, the reason is because pensions are very uh, seemingly complex, and people's eyes glaze over the minute you start talking about them. But it's really, they're really much easier to understand, um, and it's critical to understand how they work and why pensions fail. Um, there are three components to the health of a pension. They are simply money in, which is how much money goes into this pension pot. We call those contributions. There's the money invested, how the money in the pot is managed or invested over, say, a worker's 30-year employment life. And the third component is money out, how much money is paid out of the pot in the form of benefits. If any one of these three drivers of pension health is amiss, then the pension may falter or fail. And likewise, simply put, there are three ways to fix a failing pension. Put more money in the pot, invest the pot, invest the money in the pot better, or pay less money out of the pot. And the primary focus of our book, Who Stole My Pension, which is the least understood, least discussed cause, and ultimately the fix to the pension crisis, is mismanagement of the investments. And that's what's harder for people to grasp, and that's why this subject is often um, not discussed. And it's really, it's really strange because, you know, Ted, you were just up in Rhode Island and... Uh is it real vision or somebody doing a documentary on, on you and your whistleblowing and the Rhode Island pension and the governor who was stuffing her pocket with pension money and taking money from wall street as well as from the pensioners. I mean, people don't even talk about it, but only now is this, are these documentaries coming out? Is that correct? Ted? Yeah, this is this, the documentary is really focused on the pension work that I've been doing, not so much on whistleblowing, but um, Rhode Island is, is just a graphic case because the state treasurer, who is now uh, Michael Bloomberg's campaign, co-chairman of, her, of his campaign, All right. Gina Raimondo. All right. Yeah, she's, she, she's, she's backing him. Uh, she announced seven years ago that she had uh, fixed the nation's retirement crisis. There were, she was going to cut workers' benefits by 3%. What she didn't tell anybody was she was going to pay increased pay to Wall Street by 4%. So Oops. what was supposedly sold as an austerity move to shore up the pension, we're going to cut workers' benefits by 3%, was just a wealth transfer. The 3% the school teachers took and cut went straight to Wall Street, and including her own pocket because she was one of the Wall Street money managers in the pension. So she pro she personally profited from this scheme as well. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. And I'm guessing that's not uh, unique just to Rhode Island. Well, the, the her personally profiting was unique, but what's not at all unique across the country is the cutting of workers' benefits. Like I said, since 2008, half of all uh, city and state pension funds have cut their benefits. And every in every case that I'm aware of, 
where benefits have been cut, fees to Wall Street. Wall Street have skyrocketed and have gone up 10 times as much. Surprise, surprise. So once again, yeah, if, if I that, could chime in. Yeah, yeah. But wait, one sec. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just reminding you, the book is called Who Stole My Pension? Read the back cover. It says, what is America's number one export? Answer, toxic acids. The same things have brought down the subprime market called MBSs, CLOs, and MDSs. Their Wall Street is now pumping into pensions. And then there's yeah. two kinds of pensions, defined benefit, which Ted is an expert on, and defined contribution, which John McGregor, author of The Top 10 Reasons Why the Rich Go Broke, is the expert on defined contribution. So what do you have to say for yourself, John? I mean, how do you feel about what you're doing? <laughs> well, it's, it's just amazing. In, in all the years that I've done pension and both on the defined benefit and defined contribution consulting, the companies, corporations, union plans, nonprofits, it just always amazed me how powerful these pension boards were, how much money they oversaw, and how many lives were in their hands, yet how little they knew about what they were doing. These people had, I mean, these people who really oversaw the investment uh, management and made the final decision, these board members were police officers, teachers, um, donate, uh, people that donated to the specific nonprofit, they knew nothing about the investment world. They certainly had no idea of the risk levels that were involved in the investments within these plans, and they were clueless, kind of what Ted was talking about, they're clueless about the internal fees that were being charged because it's so opaque. There's no transparency in this world. So that made them easy prey. And most of these plans. And most of these, yeah, most of these plans are never audited. I mean, I, I've I've spoken to boards where you know Mr. and Mrs. Jones donated a refrigerator, and therefore now they're on the board, oh making goodness. serious investment decisions oh for thousands of retirees. It's absolutely scary. Well, one of the reasons they like to be on the board, as Ted points out in Who Stole My Pension, is that Wall Street comes in and then wines and dines them to Las Vegas, Hawaii, and Cancun. And they buy them liquor, wine, and women and beer and fried chicken. And they just no love it, right? Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've been in presentations to a board. When, when it was my time to present, they would say to me, hey, John, you've got two minutes to present your, 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 your side of this because we got a tea time that's quickly approaching. <laughs> so these board meetings, these quarterly board meetings, wasn't about the plan, the pension, how it's doing, what the fees are, or anything. It was a social event a to vacation. have a nice lunch and then go, go play 18 holes. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. And, it, and, you know, being in Hawaii, we used to see a lot of those conventions come to Hawaii. And um, just like all big gathering of men is beautiful young women show up there for some reason also, you know, just coincidentally. So anyway, nothing changes in this world. But the reason we have the Rich Dad radio show is maybe to save your soul and possibly a pension. Just remember this. This is not in the news yet, but it's coming. Ohio just announced their, their uh, medical benefits have to be cut because they don't have enough money. I first saw Ted on a TV, on a, on a documentary on the Kentucky pension. So, Ted, what were you doing talking to Kentucky people about a pension? Yeah, Kentucky is one of the worst funded pensions in the nation. They're down below 20% funded, which means they oh. have 20 cents less than 20 cents for every dollar of benefits Jeez. they've been promised. And uh, so there's a massive lawsuit in Kentucky now trying to, uh, to expose all of the hidden fees that have been paid to Wall Street hedge funds and others. And uh, we exposed this back in 2012, eight years ago, that this was coming. And uh, the board wanted nothing to do with it, uh, was not interested in hearing that news. And so the situation has got, gotten a lot worse. And John, as, as a guy who handles a de defined contribution of the 401k and all this stuff, and as a financial planner, you actually see their numbers. What do you see? I mean, these are rich people. That's why you wrote the book, the top 10 reasons the rich go broke. What do you see? I mean, Ted looks inside a pension, which are millions and millions and millions of dollars. What do you see when you look at individual rich people's quote unquote pensions, 401ks, IRAs? Well, it's interesting. No matter what the income levels are, 
almost everybody's living paycheck to paycheck. It's, 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 it's a reality, unfortunately. I mean, uh, one of the most powerful stories in my book highlights this precisely. It was a couple. They had a pension plan. They had a retirement plan. Um, they had a stock option plan. He was a high-level executive at a major global cor- corporation. And then 9-11 hit, and they were completely wiped out, completely, because they were assured, they were absolutely, absolutely assured, convinced that they had this money waiting for them when they retire. So this is systemic. No matter what the income is, what the wealth is, this is affecting everybody. And that three-legged stool we talk about really isn't a three-legged stool people are sitting on. It's more like a whoopee cushion. It's, it's a Frisbee now, man. Three, for those who may not know, in tr- traditional financial planning, you have a three-legged stool. You have savings, you have a defined benefit, and you have a defined contribution. And now all three are gone, so it's a Frisbee or a whoopee, whoopee cushion. The point here, ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing about it while you still have time. So like when I was on Wolf Blitzer in January of 2008, most people thought I was blowing smoke. So let's go into this quickly. What Ted. is somebody, what can somebody do? Ted, what can somebody do? Well, that's a, in our book, Who Stole My Pension? We go into some of the things that, it's a real action plan. It tells people what they can do. And one of the things they can do is start getting information about the pension uh, in their state or the pension they participate in. All of the pensions in the United States, all the state and local pensions have websites today. There's a tremendous amount of information on the websites about the investments, about the fees they pay. Um, we also clue people into to some of the issues like we were just discussing, that these boards universally, the boards of these pensions, lack investment experience. And you can go to 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 your pension board or look at any pension board on the internet. And you can see these guys don't have experience in making these decisions, yet they're making decisions involving trillions of dollars in, uh, in public pensions. And corporate pensions are no better. You know, often you'll have someone from human resources or in the finance department who may know a lot about corporate finance, but they don't understand the unique beast that is a pension fund. So we get, the book is full of action, action points that people can take uh, to figure out uh, what, what are the risks their pensions are taking, what are the fees they're paying, and, and get to the bottom of whether there, there's something seriously wrong. Thank you. So, John, what do you recommend if somebody, so Ted's talking about if you belong to just like one of our future guests coming up, Mark Green, he had one of these corporate pensions, UPS, and he just found out he got screwed by UPS and the Teamsters. Again, see that movie, The Irishman. Good movie. But John, what can a person with a 401k and IRA or SEP do? I mean, let me ask you this, John. If the stock market crashes, does it affect a 401k? 100%. There's a direct correlation between the stock market and how this is going to impact the 401k or the IRA market. Absolutely. And when you when you think, as we talked about earlier, the average balance for a 60-year-old is about $62,000. That is after a 12-year bull run in the stock market. And this market's not going to go on forever. In fact, we're anticipating some a major decline coming very soon. So that's going to have a radical effect on these 401k plans. So what, so what I would do is, yeah. as, as an employee, I would, I would be absolutely certain what the fees are in these plans. Now, there's been a lot of fee compression, but these plans are, like Ted said, are becoming more and more transparent. So you really want to know what the fees are, because I've always said fees are, are a great destroyer of wealth over time. Secondly, and probably most importantly, is the mindset you have. I, I would... I've always instructed people to pretend these, these pensions, these 401ks are not going to be there when you retire, just like Social Security. And the more you can convince yourself that these things are not going to be available when you retire, the more likely you're going to be mentally program, programming yourself to find other sources of income or save more for the future. That's great advice because, you know, Kim and I started the Rich Dad Company, our former ex 
partner wanted a 401k and Kim and I said, that's not what Rich Dad stands for. Because you get a false sense of security while you're getting screwed you when know, you have a 401k. But she couldn't see it that way. She couldn't see it that way. She's one of these hardcore, go to school, get a job, and invest in a 401k. And I don't think she gets, gets the whole thing. So once again, this is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show with Kim. I can be forewarned, January 2008. If you want to see me on CNN with Wolf Blitzer and one of the crooks from Wall Street, check it out because I was calling it and people had a chance to get out. So once again, this series is probably a five to maybe a seven part series bringing other experts in to give you fair warning so you can get out before it's too late. Final words, Kim. Yeah, well, one, one thing I hear Ted and John saying is you got to face the facts. And I think a lot of people want to keep their head in the sand. They want to think that somebody else is going to fix their problem. They don't want to face the facts that their money may not be there and probably will not be there. So at some point, you got to look, you got to face the facts and look at where you are and what you've got and, and grow up and not depend upon somebody else. That's what the Rich Dad Company is all about. So start being your your best investment advisor instead of counting on all these other people who are stealing your money. So once again, John McGregor, he's the author of the 10 top 10, top 10 reasons why the rich go broke. John, John is a certified financial planner, but he is one of the leading experts on pensions. I've, he's taught men, thousands and thousands of other financial planners and been an advisor to pension plans. But most people don't listen because they lack the financial education to discern what he's saying except they go on these big parties in Hawaii or Vegas or Mexico and party on. And Ted Sedell will be back with us because he's the expert on his former SSC attorney, and he's an expert on the defined contribution. So thank you very much, gentlemen. So once again, that's Robert Kiyosaki. We'll be right back with further conversations with Kim and myself. We'll be right back. Yes, Welcome sir. back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And please leave, leave us a review whenever you listen to our program. We want to hear from you. Is this program worth it? Does it help you? What else would you like to know? And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one main reason. It's because Rich Dad is an ed, ed, education company. We don't give investment advice, nor do we recommend stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, and all that stuff. So if you listen to this program again, you'll learn twice as much because repetition is how we learn. But more importantly, if you have friends, family, and coworkers who are counting on their pensions, please go to richdadradio.com and have them listen to this program. And uh, as they say, denial is not the name of a river in Africa. And most people are in denial. They don't want to look. I hear many people, when the 401k statement comes in, they don't want to look because there's not enough there. It's been looted. It's been looted. But that's, again, why the Rich Dad Company was formed. And once again, the reason we wrote Who Stole My Pension, which just came out in 2020, is you are now forewarned. You know, in January of 2008, when I called the demise of Lehman Brother. Nobody listened, but it went down in September. Well, I, unfortunately, I think a lot of people are going to have a wake-up call, and it reminds me of, of my friend. Her name is Kim also, and she worked with a, in the dot-com bubble, and she got a million-dollar bonus, and everything was great, and they turned it over to the financial planner of the company. And years later, she gets her statement, and she finally does look at it, finally, for this first time, and it says zero. And she's like, what are you talking about, zero? She said, I put a million dollars in here. And he goes, yeah, it's, it's all gone. And they basically just turned it, turned it, turned it, turned it, and and ate up her million dollars. So that was her wake up call. Now she's back to work, but unfortunately, I think that's going to be a, a horrible, horrible situation for a lot of people if they, as you said, Robert, are in denial and aren't willing to look at the facts and find out where you are today, because otherwise you're going to be, as Ted said, you're going to be older, you're going to be more frail, you're not going to be able to work, and you're going to be broke. So once again, if you have friends, family, and work associates who are in denial or need to know this stuff, go to richdadradio.com, listen to this program, discuss it. If you discuss it, you'll be 10 times smarter. You, you, might, you might not be popular, but you, at least you'll be aware. Because like I said, in January of 2008, I warned people, go to Rich Dad, you can find me on CNN with Wolf Blitzer. And people didn't listen. You have time to get out yet and do something different. So that's why we're doing this. this is the first of possibly a five to seven part series. 
Our first expert was John McGregor, a dear friend, certified financial planner, who sees it every single day talking to people, rich people who are in denial. They don't have anything set aside. And if you're a young person and you think this is not gonna affect you, think again, because this is gonna be the biggest crash ever to make 2008 look like a blip. This is gonna be the biggest one because you know Kim and I live in a very exclusive neighborhood in South Carolina, and most of those people are very rich, but they're rich in the stock market. And we're having dinner the other night with these, these rich people, very smart people, and they said, oh, I love Trump, stock market's up. But they're watching the wrong market. The market is called the corporate credit market. That's what people are not watching. Sometimes Some people call it kind of the bond market, but they're watching the wrong markets. And you know, Trump's a friend of ours, but he wants to get reelected. He's gonna keep that thing propped up. So that means you have more time to get out now. So get who stole my pension and wake up. Because in who stole my pension, a lot of my friends are mentioned in there. They're called pilots. They flew for US Air, United Airlines. And when I was getting out of the Marine Corps in 73, 74, Everybody was jumping on. They're gonna fly for Eastern, United, Delta, Continental, US Air. And my friends were the happiest, the ones who got hired by United Airlines. Guess what? Their pension was stolen years ago, years ago. Now they can't retire. So this is why we do the Rich Dad, Rich Dad Company was formed in the first place, but the Rich Dad radio program and why we wrote Who, who Stole My Pension is to give you prior warning. You still have a few months to get ready. Comments, Kim? Well, again, I just want to say, you know, people say, well, it's not my problem. I don't have a pension. I don't have to worry about it. But as Ted said, who pays for the pensions are us, the taxpayers. And they're going to be looking. They're already, the hunt for taxes is is rampant. In, in the U.S. and countries all over the world, they're looking for how to find more, how to tax you more and more and more. So we're just at the blip of the blip of the iceberg right now. So again, look at what you can do and find solutions for yourself at this point. So one of the interesting things about Ted Sedell, again, he is a former SEC attorney and he got sick and tired of watching the SEC just close its eyes and just let Wall Street steal the money, let the labor union steal the money, let the city and city officials steal the money. SEC just close their eyes. So Ted decided to become a whistleblower and it's paid off quite handsomely for him. I think, I think how much did he say he made last year? I don't know, a lot. A lot of money. <laughs> Millions. And he's going to make even more because he's going to blow the whistle on even, you know, someday I'll tell you who he's tracking down next. And they'll tell you they're a very big company. I mean, I got to stand far away from Ted because he's going to have a target on his back because he goes in and he goes after the biggest people in the world. He has no fear on this thing. But the point is, ladies and gentlemen, for little guys like us, question is, what are you going to do? Oh, are you going to do? Now, on the good side of it, the way I look at it, and most of the rich dad advisors look at it, this next crash is gonna make us richer because you make more money in a market crash than when the market goes up. There's an old saying in the markets that says, the bull goes up the stairs and the bear goes out the window. And what that means, it takes a long time for a market to reach all time highs. And now it's pushing it's twice as high as it was in 2008, the Dow is twice as high. But when it goes down, it's like the bear goes out the window. And it's gonna come down so fast, if you say, well, I'll, I'll just wait till it goes down and then I'll do something about it. My opinion, it'd be too late. Comments, Kim? No, no we're good. I think, I think we're good. I think that's good. So the final word is this, so why are, why are Ted and I co-authors? Well, one reason we had, we both had fathers that lost their pensions and it affected us. My father, poor dad, was a head of the teachers union, also head on the governor's staff and he made the mistake of r r running for lieutenant governor against his boss, the governor. And the governor said to my dad, you have lost your job, your paycheck and your pension. And my poor dad was not poor until he lost his job, his paycheck and his pension. So that affected me. And I found that out when I came back from Vietnam. Ted's story is very similar. Ted's father was a CIA operative in Uganda, I believe. And Idi Amin murdered him. They never found his father. So without a body, they couldn't collect a pension. 
So Ted's family was in serious trouble, and that's when he didn't trust pensions either. So as a young man, he realized then he had he has got to do something differently because without a body, the body was disappeared. They couldn't collect Social Security. They couldn't collect insurance. They couldn't collect anything. So ladies and gentlemen, right now it's best to be forewarned and get prepared while you still have chance. So please get Who Stole My Pension and John McGregor's book, Top 10 Reasons the Rich Go Broke. It'll open up your eyes and maybe say, I better, I better start doing something now. And once again, this is part of a possibly a five to seven part series. And we'll have other experts coming on, including Mark Green, who was the teamster for UPS and how much his pension got stolen. Thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Thank you.